Last time on AlphaCraft. Hello there and welcome back to AlphaCraft. I'm still hip deep in cleaning up after the chicken bomb and I knew there would be a lot of chickens to clear and Although it would be simpler to just run around with my sword hacking and slashing my way through the mess, I thought, wouldn't it be more fun to get some help? Help from who? Foxes, of course! Don't mind the ones being dragged back to my base. They just want to act like they're too cool for all this. And now with the foxes helping me with cleanup, it's time to step back a few days and catch up on all the things I skipped to release the last episode. I know, I know, every episode so far has had to deal with pranks, but I assure you, this episode won't have anything to do with pranks. Nothing at all. Word on the Mushroom Island is that Frilioff's Iron Shop resides in this building here, clearly labeled Rich Mart. Remember, Rich Mart is the place to go for stuff. If you want stuff, find it at Rich Mart. Rich Mart. It's where your stuff lives. This is Frill's Iron Shop. And this is the slot machine. This is where we can gamble and win stuff. Hmm. We must do something with this, but there's got to be something around here that explains it. Oh, here we go, here we go. So I'll leave the book open for you to read all the details, but basically the way it works is this. You buy iron and you get a receipt. You take the receipt to the slot machine attendant and turn it in for tokens. Each receipt is worth 10 tokens, and each token equals a spin on the slot machine. If you win something, it will spit out a prize token at you. You can turn the prize tokens into the slot machine guy and collect your prize. Easy peasy. So let's get a couple shulkers of iron. Uh, that should do. It gives us two receipts. Uh, yeah, we got the receipts. Yeah, let's put the receipts down here. And then turn those receipts into the token guy. Uh, yeah, that's you. Okay. There's where we get our tokens per receipt. Uh, so let's turn those in. There we go. And here's all the prizes we can win if we get a good result on the slot machine. And I think we put the tokens in here, right? Yeah. Alright, there we go. And we press this button, right? Alright, so we need to get three of a kind. So that's not gonna win. Let's try again. Oh, 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 All right, let's try again. Uh, not today, I guess. Nope. Uh, nope. Mm, nope. Uh, no. Come on, come on. Gotta win sometime, right? Come on, come on, oh, come on, come on, come on. There we go, there we go, there we go! All right. That gets us his free token. We hand it in this guy over here. Let me brag for a moment. We hand it in this guy over here. And that'll get us a free shulker. But you know what, you know what? I'm going to hold on to this one. I'll hang this up in my trophy wall someday. Then my first... My first win. Uh, nope. We can get another. We can get another one, right? We 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 can do this. We can do this. Several diamonds later. All right, come on, come on, come on. Oh well, no, that's not gonna win. Come on, is it is it too much for you to let me win again? Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. I don't want to. Oh 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 oh. Oh. 
Um, um, yeah. Yeah, so that happened, but on a brighter note, Marky and Jin invited me over to spawn one day because a certain bunny made the mistake of going AFK while out in the open. Now that's practically a crime on Alpha Craft. We got together and eventually ended up building a door maze around her covered in a mushroom cap to blend in with the surroundings. Nothing horrible, just something to let her know we appreciate her. But fun times aside, word eventually got out that I broke the slot machine, and Frill had to try and make it as Gregor-proof as possible. There was, of course, a lot of commentary about it on Discord, but two comments stuck out for me. Now, you know, inspiration is a funny thing. You never know where it will come from or what will light that fire. In this case, it, it came from these two innocent-seeming comments. There's, there's nothing bad about them. Nothing at all, but they were enough for ideas to land in my head and start taking up living space there until I took care of them. And right now, we're out at Vegas Vic's base to leave him a little gift. Okay, so the worst possible thing that could have happened has happened. Vic logged in a little while ago and is down there at his base and could spot us at any moment. So all I can do now is keep going and hope he just never looks up. I mean, that's possible, right? I mean, he logged in while I was working on that popcorn logo down there. I, I was able to finish that up without him seeing me. Now it's just a race to put some popcorn on top. Or, or maybe he's not even down there. Maybe... You know, he's been helping break bedrock in the nether recently, so maybe he's in the nether setting off TNT. Fingers crossed. Um, and also Matt and Puma, and I guess somehow they found out I was on Adult Scrap, or they saw Adult Scrap somewhere and decided to join in there too, and it's, what on earth is that? I just noticed that. Grigori's at it again. Look at this. This is... <laughs> Look at this dude. It is him. <laughs> he can't deny it. You see nothing. <laughs> We were both having some audio issues that day, so I can't include any more of our conversation, but the only thing that matters is 
I had been caught popcorn handed. So while Vic has been testing out his audio settings, I've been working hard to finish the build up. He seems to like it, so I need to finish it as if nothing happened. And here is a little flyby view of the final build with the popcorn logo in place and all the little butter on top and getting caught aside. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Everything was just done on the fly. I, I didn't plan any of this. I just looked at a picture of popcorn box I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I started the build during a time when Vic was never on and as fate would have it, he came on to check his streamer settings. It's just one of those random things that happens. Ah, well. Surprise or no surprise, he certainly wasn't expecting it. I was just hoping I wouldn't be here when he found it. Okay, Vic has been pranked, and now to prank Stina Rose. Now, if you don't remember, her comment was this. After much searching, I finally found her trader hall and thought I could just fill the whole place with buttons for her to press. Now, for some of you out there, you might think a prank like this is a little on the tame side. And yeah, maybe, but I am new to the server and still getting to know everyone. And when you prank someone for the first time, you, you want to start small. One, because you're feeling them out to see if they're okay with that. And two, if they are, you want to be able to up the ante on the next prank. You know, if there is one. I if you start with a big prank and they're naturally going to try and top it in some way, you quickly get to the point of blowing each other up, and that's not fun, at least not for me. Me, I like to start off subtle and slowly raise the stakes over time. It's, it's much more fun that way, and... And there we go. The entire floor has been covered with buttons, at least where I knew it wouldn't break anything, and with one additional surprise for Stina. Pressing one of the buttons actually does something. That should be surprising, right? Now I think that is a perfectly sane way to respond to someone insinuating that you like to press buttons. And then there was the day that Marky Sparky decided to go into the goat horn business by setting up a shop right across the way from me in Richmart. Apparently he's been putting all the goats I gave him to good use, but... And it needs to be said. No one competes with me on goat horns. All that wonderful goat horn diamondage is mine. Mine, I say! Well, let's see what his pricing is. Oh, one diamond per horn, huh? So he is undercutting me, but... Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. He didn't wax his sign. Under the long and storied history of pranking rules, I think that means I can edit his sign to say whatever I want. <laughs> Now, is that really one of the rules of pranking? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I don't know. I'm just making all this stuff up as I go. If it wasn't a rule before, it's a rule now. Put some value back in all that honeycomb to keep people from changing your signs. Maybe I need to go into a honeycomb business. I, I, focus, 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 Gregor. We're here to deal with a would-be competitor. Hmm. Let's see what we can do with this. And there you go. Through the magic of editing, we see that Marky's shop not only sells low-quality horns, because of course he does, but he's trying to rip people off for three diamonds each. How does he live with himself? Yes, I think... I think that's an appropriate response to that prank. Uh, no, since we're catching up on all the pranks from last month, the, there was that time when a bunch of wool magically appeared around an AFK and gobspit. It's still a mystery to this day who did that one. And then there was that time I arrived home to find skulls and blood inside my house. Uh, this one had a definite Aussie feel to it, if, if I had to guess. And, and oh yeah, there, there was the grand opening of Jin's TNT shop where I installed a creeper doorbell ringer for the store. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure this one qualifies as a prank, as it really comes off as something the shop was missing all along. I, I mean, if you walked into a TNT shop and heard a creeper about to go off, wouldn't that almost be expected? Ah, uh, well, prank, gift, 
Sometimes these things are in the eye of the beholder. And I definitely can't forget that time I pranked Bunny Bond. Why Bunny? Well, like I said earlier, there's no telling what will inspire an idea, but this time it was because Bunny hadn't built her wool shop yet and was telling everyone to just go to her farm and grab what they needed. Which made my weird little brain think, wouldn't it be funny if people went there to grab wool and the chests were all filled with something else and... So, one night Bunny finally logged off and, and I jumped into action. Now the plan here is to not steal her stock, I, I'm not a thief, and something I like to keep in mind when doing a prank like this is I don't want to break Bunny's farm. I just want it to look like maybe the farm is broken or someone stole her stock. I have no idea when or who will discover this has been done, and so I want her farm to continue working, just not in the way Bunny expects. Now Bunny's setup is that each sheep is sitting above a hopper minecart, so she doesn't need to mess around with any item sorting. And the minecart feeds into a hopper, which feeds into a chest, which ultimately feeds into an appropriately colored shulker at the front. So what I'm doing is reversing the hoppers under the hopper cart. This isn't something that can be easily seen without tearing the farm apart to find out what the heck is going on. So the reversed hopper will feed into a different chest that she can't see. The chest in front will be empty and the shulkers will all be filled with some other filler item renamed for the wool that should have been in the shulker. Now it should be said, this turned out to be a lot more work than I thought it would be when I started, but once I was knee-deep into it, there was nothing to do but finish. And with that, all 16 sheep pods have been reversed and are fully functional again. Now to fill the shulkers, I'm using brown mushrooms as the filler items because, well, I've been spending a lot of time on the server greenifying Spawn Island. A byproduct of that is that I now have a ton of brown mushrooms just lying around. Might as well put them all to use. So the first step is to fill the shulkers with mushrooms, renamed for the wool they're replacing, but, as an added side joke, I put a unique mushroom in each shulker with some random message for Bunny. On the day, I just thought it would be funny to try and somehow frame Frill for it by renaming them all with messages that it couldn't possibly have been Frill who did this. Obviously, I have zero expectations that this would actually work, but it made me laugh. At this point, just about anything was making me laugh. I, I was getting a little punchy. It, it was early morning, and, and this prank took roughly an hour to complete, so at this point, anything that was making me laugh was making it worthwhile. So, remember that bit at the beginning where I said this video wouldn't have anything to do with pranks? Um, yeah. I may have fudged the truth there a little bit. Gave the old truth a good stretching. Maybe even outright lied. Yeah, yeah, I lied. I, I, but I had to. They deserved those pranks. They did. They did. I mean, I know so far things have been a bit prank heavy, but I really don't spend all my time pranking people. I don't. Really. I don't. I do other stuff. I mean, it's not like I spend all my time trying to figure out ways to prank people. I don't. I mean, what kind of person would do that? But all that said, it is that time again. The video's running a little bit long, and so I'm going to call it there. I know I promised to show off the base this episode, but I just don't have time for that today. Next time for sure. Until then, I have been Gregor, and this has been Alphagraft. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, always try and find a way to make it fun. See ya! I mean, I don't know why no one ever believes me when I say I don't prank people. I mean, simply not me. No, 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 that's not me. Nope. I just don't have it in me to prank people that don't deserve it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean, I never done nothing.